and this is Lala, and today I'm going to be recapping slash reviewing and giving my retrospective thought on that island, and I love this season. I'm not even going to hide it. This is the first season where Era 2 completely took over, and the few people who were in Era 1 were booted very quickly in this season. So, in general, it's just a very Era 2 heavy season where they pretty much took over most, if not all, the storylines. And it was repugnant. I've heard many rumors pertaining why they decided to do this, with them wanting to film something quick, with the recession being around the corner, them wanting to try to capitalize on the formula of Survivor, so they decided to do this. They are trying to save money since the show was almost canceled about a year ago. Whatever the reason is, the challenge should never try to do this format ever again, and to be fair, they haven't. The contestants were starving, and they gave them a lot of alcohol and a lot of food, which caused them to act crazy, but it wasn't like they were in a house getting drunk. They were on a stranded island getting drunk, where they had to deal with flies and all that stuff. Due to all the above, and just a lot of the men having issues with women, the misogyny and chauvinism that took place in the season was repugnant and was not entertaining to watch, and apparently it was a lot worse than what was shown. And you really hate and know the people that you are watching. It wasn't an enjoyable watch, seeing one eyeline just steamroll using these awful tactics, which is awful, and it's even worse because you could probably predict that the producers most likely encourage a lot of this behavior. In general, the format really is just crap, where there's really no dailies happening whatsoever, and the only challenges that there are are face-offs, where three people nominate themselves, or three people are nominated via vote, and they have to fight for immunity where they get a key, and the other two face a vote, and the person who survives the vote gets the key. And it really just is not pleasant whatsoever. I think when people think of the worst of Era 2, they think of this season, and honestly, the next few seasons, since the JFK crew really forms around here and their subsidiaries as well. While Evelyn definitely got a lot throughout the season, it was hard for me to fully sympathize with her due to her supporting the same awful people last season. Honestly, let's just get right to it. I also think that one of the reasons why they did this season is because their Inferno and Gauntlet trilogies ended and they needed something else to become a sequel or a trilogy, and they just had very little ideas. I will say that the newbies slash rookies of the season are more notable and had a bit more longevity than the rookies of the last few seasons and even the last season or the next season after this, so I'll give up props for that. But in general, the season sucks ass. The cast are taken to Panama, where they do not realize that they are being taken to an island with no actual home to live in. We get some interest from the long-returning veterans, like Rachel, who has no friends on the season, Tanya, who has it together now as she lives in a small town of 500 people, and Derek mentions that he is married with a child on the way. The cast is told that there are no teams and no challenges this season, where the money is in a treasure chest of $300,000, where they need to build a boat, and two boats will be built, but four people can only go on per boat, meaning that some people will be left behind, meaning that they will be eliminated. We see their scarce drinking water, their bathroom conditions, and their quote-unquote home, which isn't closed off at all. They are given a bunch of rice as well as boiled chicken, and we see some tensions around the rations of the food already. Bananas and Kenny are already potting, and Kellyanne is given advice from Johanna regarding some of the veterans, and to just wait things out. Tanya is getting stressed out, nervous, and scared because she isn't popular, the atmosphere as the season is really scary to her, and she really wants to show people that she has changed, and it's just sad seeing the insecurity, especially with what will happen to her in the future. Dan is talking about not letting the environment get him done, and he has drank so much, without really taking things in. Ryan is making out with I don't even know which woman it is, and we see Jen and Rachel make out with one another, despite Jen stating that she does not hook up with or date women. 
Kenny and Johanna are getting ready to flirt with one another because she is now single, and Kenny now hates Wes, which came out of nowhere. Kelly and Kahara are getting a bit too close, though they came from the same real world season, so there's some carry over there. Abram does not want to punch people this time. Apparently, the last time he was on TV was on the last season of Road Rules, where he got kicked off for whooping Adam Larson's ass, essentially, and he is trying to be on his best behavior, since he doesn't want to ping-pong anyone's head. But we do see him trying to build another shelter for the cast and a bunch of tools for them, so he's really in his element. We see Tanya and Kenny arguing about the food slash sanctions, and he tells her to take some medication. He calls her a retard, and she calls him out for his misogyny and complaining about the dishes, but him not doing any himself. It's really bad watching this now that we know what would cause the both of them to not be on the show anymore, and he claims that he's doing it because he's bored, though he acts like this to women in other seasons, so this is just utter BS in my opinion. TJ reappears on the screen and to the cast, and tells them about their airdrops and aircrafts, which will help them regarding materials. The first airdrop is materials for the boats that they will have to build, and Evelyn is getting annoyed with bananas already. Dan wants to create a rookie crew with Dunbar, and he calls out the veterans for being better about not losing, and it seems like Dunbar is interesting in it. Hopefully I'm not comparing him, or confusing him with Dave, to be honest, at this point. We see Johanna being carried to the ocean and to make out with Kenny on the beach, with everyone watching them, and it's all so obnoxious, and it's clear that they're intentionally doing this to put on a show, with everyone watching, and it's clear that they want to prove something to us. It just doesn't really seem that believable, in my opinion. Face-offs are the equivalent of challenges, where three people compete in it, with one person getting a challenge, and the other two are up for a vote out, where one person is saved and the other is booted. Abraham and Kenny volunteer, and everyone wants a girl to go in, where Tanya is voted in to go into the face-off, where most of the newbies vote her in as well. Ashley complains about not getting, sorry, she complains about almost getting voted in, and Bananas is clearly continuing the success rhetoric that has came from the last two seasons, as he states that the men are mentally, they are mentally and physically stronger, so it's best to keep them all around. And while the sexism was a bit more under the radar in the last two seasons, it really explodes here. Leaning Tower is the first challenge, or the first face-off, where they have to go into the water to grab 12 keys and put it on some sort of tower or whatever. It is no shocker that the men perform better than Tanya, with Abram winning the challenge. Tanya and Kenny now have to get Pain to people as to why they should stay, and it really isn't shocking that an unpopular person, i.e. Tanya, is going to get booed over one of the most political and social people on the show, i.e. Kenny. Despite Tanya mentioning that she isn't a threat, Kenny mentions that he and Paula learned from last season to not keep the weak player, i.e. Eric. Tanya is voted out in a 14 to 3 vote, and Kenny now has a key for surviving a vote, but the people with keys now also have to protect their key since it can't be taken. Derek decides to align with Johnny and Kenny since they are running the game and are strong, and the episode ends with Kenny and Johanna making out. Anya at the end talks about passing the torch, and I really wish she did pass the torch this season and to stop coming on the challenge and live her small or live in her small town, Nebraska town. She did seem like she was in a better place, but the misogyny was disgusting and it was good that she wasn't there long. You really feel for her here. We start the episode with people complaining about the conditions, and we see Dave talking about how he can handle all this. Bananas realizes that everyone, sorry, that keeping everyone fed is a good political move, and we see him accuse Kelly Ann of stealing her friend's food, which causes the two of them to go at it, which would be the start of their very nasty feud. Dan starts to go crazy from his antics, which only gets worse when he drinks, where it starts to make him a liability. Dave wants to get rid of Dan and tells Bananas this, who ends up telling Dan this. Anyways, Abram gets warmed by bees and he looks like a complete mess. Kenny starts picking at Robin and then Bananas somehow directs this to Kelly Ann, where he makes fun of her bad plastic surgery, where the two of them continue arguing and Robin lectures him for his poor behavior, only for him to claim that he is joking. 
only for us to see some more unseen clips of his friends where he's clearly not joking. And Junkin Dan ends up confronting Dave about trying to target him, and he's just like, why are you targeting me? This is ridiculous, no? And he's pointing his fingers, and he's so slurring his speech, and it's just kind of sad to watch, but kind of entertaining as well. And Dave doesn't even react to this because of how ridiculous and drunk Dan is. Honestly, I might have been confusing the two men's names throughout this review so far, so keep that in mind, and they do look alike, too. Dan is now apologetic in the next morning and gets a lecture from Ashley about how the guys aren't going to help keep him around if he continues to be an outright drunk. So, an aircraft drops and it has a cell phone in it, but you can only be on it for 10 minutes, and more materials for the boat is in the package as well. Abram calls his work and is told that there are some serious issues with his company. Dave hasn't touched alcohol since he has been in the house, sorry, not on the season, but decided to drink now, and he's acting like a complete, huge lunatic, kind of similar to how Dan was acting in the last episode and kind of earlier on in this episode where he was kind of lecturing Dan about it and trying to get him targeted due to it. But I think he was an alcoholic, so maybe that's why it's kind of off here. We get no context, but Dave then decides to randomly leave and quit, and of course a bunch of people make fun of him. And Kenny mentions that no one gives a shit about him being a star of the real world Hollywood, so I'm assuming that's what Dave was telling people. Whatever. Jen convinces him to stay for the night, and then to see how he feels in the morning. And then we move on to the morning where he now wants to go home because um, he met a woman a month and a half ago and he really wants to see where that goes. Though some others mentioned that he quit because he was going to get voted out soon anyways. It's alleged that there's a lot more to this quit situation and that it was way too dark to show on the show. So... Maybe that's why the discombobulated edit is why it is the way it is, because it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Derek, Johnny, and Abram are in the face-off, despite Abram already having a key. And honestly, it's clear that he's kind of doing this because he showed up for an appearance fee, most likely, and is trying to get sent home. But the plan for Johnny and Derek to get their keys in jeopardy. Sorry, that is the plan for them where Abram said to go home. Kenny warns Bananas that he needs to win the challenge since the girls will most likely vote him out, and Kenny does not want his main alliance member voted out. Ring Whistle is the face-off, and Derek, who essentially is the pro of pole wrestling slash ring wrestling, wins it and gets his key. Abram campaigns to get voted out because he needs to go home, despite loving the island atmosphere, but it's not like he has access to the internet like on other seasons to handle this issue. Despite this, Rachel doesn't give a fuck, so she and a bunch of the women still want to vote Bananas out to keep Abram in. Abram gets voted out in a 96 vote, despite Abram wanting to quit, and it's one of the biggest what-ifs in challenge history, since if Johnny Bananas was voted out here, would he have had much more longevity on the show? Abram gives Dunbar his key. In Genoa, I do get why Dave never came back, and he does come across as a lame, despite all the talk that he did. And like I mentioned earlier, it kind of makes sense for there to be more context to the situation that they just didn't show. You can tell that Abram was really enjoying the environment and the season and the elements. And I was thinking initially that the season would have been better had it been on it, Though he also has his fair share of issues with women outside of the house that it's known for, so he might have contributed to the misogyny as well, and I actually don't know if the season would have been better had he actually stayed. So John, Paula, Johanna, and the three others that have keys, so Dunbar, Derek, and Kenny, are in an alliance where everyone else is together, though we lead to Johnny and Kelly Ann arguing about food rations once again. He calls the woman weak and throws a few retards, and I'm sure I heard a few bitches in there. And Evelyn calls out the fact that he got a key only because Abram quit, though he is bragging about not going anywhere and how he's undefeatable. Robin is talking about wanting to win since it is her sixth challenge, and Derek is worried about Robin freaking out. I don't know if this is where she started her, um, issues, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But we do see Rachel and Jen 
who are getting very close, where the former refuses to campaign and the latter realizes that she needs to join with the vets, since the rookie treatment keeps her safe. So I guess this is the shift in Jen's career, at least politically. Ryan is told by Kenny and Johanna that Robin took a bigger piece of the food. He confronts her about it, and Robin calls out Kenny and Johanna, which causes a fight between the three of them, and they are all accusing Robin of being too paranoid. Robin tells Johanna that they should go in the face off to handle their issues, and she calls Johanna out for essentially fucking Kenny to get to the end. Though apparently Robin likes Kenny too, which adds some insight there. But despite all of that talk, Johanna really doesn't want to face Robin in the face off. Johanna does whine and cry to Kenny, who tells her that he has her back, regardless of their intimate relationship. Another aircraft drops, and Evelyn is planning on volunteering, but she hears that Kellyanne will be voted in if she volunteers, to essentially ensure that one of them goes home, and Kohara states that he has her back. Robin pretty much knows that she is kicked out of their alliance, and Johanna is actively planning to get rid of her, though Rachel wants to volunteer, whereas she does not approve of Johanna's strategy to just wait around and do nothing. Dan and Robin end up in some shormance, which is pretty random, and Rachel is crushing hard on Jen, where we see them making out too, and I forgot that Jen also made out with Brooke on their real world season, so she clearly is bisexual, but she's kind of trying to deny it. Rachel proposes for herself to go in against Kelly Ann and Ashley, so she's essentially trying to use her vet privilege as the oldest veteran in the house and the one who's done the show the longest, and it causes some dissension between herself and Robin, where the latter also makes it clear that she wants to go in. Rachel, Kelly Ann, and Robin are the ones voted in, though the plan is for Kelly Ann to lose, where the vets are helping them both out. So Kenny is essentially pushing for Rachel to go, despite all the hatred of Kelly Ann going around. The rack is the face-off, where they have to hold on to the other rack bar for as long as possible, and they will be asked to move to new positions during the challenge, so it's essentially a long endurance competition. Kelly Ann ends up winning the face off, hence getting a key. Despite what she said in the beginning of the episode about kissing ass and campaigning, Rachel does exactly that to Johnny and Kenny, stating that she will do anything it takes to stay and to have their bags, and they both know that she's a cutthroat gamer who has a lot of influence, where Robin doesn't know how to play the game. Rachel then kind of takes back everything she said in a campaign, where she initially agreed that she would cut Jen, though she tells them later that she wouldn't cut Jen, and Rachel is voted out in a close 8-6 to six vote, where the Bananas and Kenny Alliance celebrate their control over the house. It was interesting seeing Rachel play her own, or play on her own without her allies there, and her hookup with Jen, which will carry out to next season, was definitely um something to watch. Clearly she didn't last long in the season, but she leaped. But she wasn't blindsided this time, at least, and wasn't as bad as she was in her last few seasons in comparison. People are getting tired of the conditions with the food, poor sleep, and living conditions, where Paula and Ashley want to get their keys, with a lot of focus on Ashley, so she's clearly in danger since she was invisible for the prior three episodes. Evelyn realizes that the cast is trying to freeze her out from getting a key, so she will not be eligible to go in the finals. If only people did this in the Skull Seasons, but we'll get there many eons from now. She complains about Johnny and not getting sent in, though Kenny tells her that she had a chance last time, but refused to do so because Kelly Ann was in. Bananas and Evelyn argue about the food, since she has been hoarding the food and he thinks that men should have a bigger portion, where he calls her a bunch of bitches and she rants about him being a chauvinistic sexist. Bananas does mention that because men have larger stomachs and they need more fuel, they should get more, but he never explains it like that and just lets his violence take over. Everyone is celebrating Bananas' birthday, and there is a party happening, where Jen speaks to Bananas, where she essentially campaigns to join his side, so he wants to help her get a key, where it will also freeze out his two enemies from getting one. Robin argues with Ashley, since she called the other woman a rookie in a derogatory manner, and Robin feels like she has that right to call her that, though she makes fun of Robin for being 30 and still doing challenges, and has it won in seven challenges. Ashley somehow gets her toe cut after her fight with Robin, and Robin initially doesn't care because Ashley wouldn't take her apology, though we never actually saw this apology on screen if I remember correctly. 
they do end up making up the next day, but Ashley clearly has other issues to worry about. They get another aircraft where they are given goods. Ashley now can't do challenges or anything for another week, according to the doctors, or from the instruction of doctors, but she doesn't want to quit, though everyone rightfully sees her as a liability. Dunbar starts making rude comments, calling Coley and Ashley bitches, stating that she should just die and go away. What the fuck is wrong with this asshole ingrate? Anyways, he's clearly suffering from starvation, but he's just horrendous and boring at the same time anyway, so who cares? Bananas and Kenny plan to send Kelly Ann back in, but they are trying to help Paula and Johanna get keys, while Jen also wants to get a key, but Johanna and Paula do not want to go in against Kelly Ann, though the men think that it is ridiculous. Paula, Jen, and Ashley are going in the face-off, though TJ is annoyed that she isn't outright quitting. A bunch of flies swarm their living festivities before the challenge, which is Ball Buster, where they have to choose a guy where they have to roll a ball in the net and get two scores. I feel like they've done some iterations of this challenge in future seasons, and I do like it overall. Or actually, no, I think this is the challenge that they've done a lot in Survivor. I know they did something along the lines of this in Survivor Guatemala and a few other seasons, if I remember correctly. Paula and Jen make a deal to help Paula get the final point, hence getting a key, since Jen knows that she will beat Ashley in a vote instead of Paula, or if Jen was against Paula in that vote, and it's all pretty smart on both of their ends, I will admit that. Ashley pretty much knows that she is screwed, and TJ lectures at her again for seeing that she is quitting, or saying that she is quitting because of her speech, but Ashley is voted out in a unanimous 7-0 vote. Paula, Johanna, Bananas, and Kenny are planning to keep Evelyn out of the nominations, with the latter consistently rambling and ranting about how everyone screwed her out of getting a key in this round. And honestly, Evelyn's entitlement and attitude about this is really just annoying the fuck out of me. Clearly, people were not pleased with Ashley for not quitting automatically, and she was invincible essentially for every episode outside of her last, but she did get into a few arguments, and so there was some fieriness there. So she wasn't the worst. In general, it really isn't a big loss that she never came back, though. Now that all the keys for the final are handed out, eight of them, people are wondering what will happen next. And we also see people struggling to entertain themselves as well. A stick somehow, or not a stick, like those, um, no, like a microscope log thingy ended up on Evelyn's bed. And Bananas and Paula were playing around with it, and she approaches them with the telescope lens that was on her bed, and she freaks out on him. And he calls her a dumb bitch and a retard, and he claims he didn't do it, and he mentions that he isn't the only one that dislikes her in the cast. Another aircraft drops where they get sugar, eggs, and veggies, and Dunbar is pissed that there's no meat. A map shows up, and they follow it to get more boxes, and Dunbar picks a fight with Coley and Kellyanne about the distribution of the eggs. Bananas notices that there is a third heart, or a third X, on the map, which he tells Dunbar and Kenny about, and the men look for the treasure in the third spot, where essentially nothing is in it, and they wasted their time. They all deserve it for being such pricks. Kenny and Dunbar show up with the map to everyone, and the one man, like, what? Okay, um, essentially, the woman plots to get Evelyn sent home, so they send her in the face-off with two men, so that's the plan that the not heard crew of E, not E, J, K, D, and all of them, Johnny and Evans, Johnny and Kenny's crew, is coming up with, so Johnny and Evans, Johnny and Kenny's crew is planning to get Evelyn into the face-off with two men so they can send her home. That was really just a word fuck. I don't know what the heck I'm on. Anyways, Tyree and Evelyn run here where he wants all the men to go in. Since there's been rounds with all women, but the two and Dan decide to go in. Since all the women are essentially scared to go against Evelyn. And TJ announces that whomever wins this face-off and the face-offs from now on is able to take a key from one of the eight who have it. The main nerd herd realize that Evelyn is going to take Johnny's key, but they plot to have Evelyn take Kelly Ann's key by threatening that if she takes their keys, they will ensure hers will be taken next. Evelyn tells Kellyanne this, who rants to Kahara about it. 
Bananas tells Dan that he wants him to win. Dan is from the military, and Robin is worried about him distancing himself from her, where it causes some dissension between the two of them, and the show much is just so volatile throughout the season. Bridget is the face-off, where they have to walk across and pull a select amount of planks to get the right combination. Tyree fucks it up, and Evelyn wins the face-off, where Bananas accuses him of DQing on purpose, and Tyree kind of snaps on Johnny, but it really doesn't need too much. Tyree rants to Dan about going after the bakery if he stays, and Evelyn tells JK that she is not taking Kellyanne's key, but she might take Dunbar since he really didn't earn it, and they suggest her take Jen's, though she takes all this to report it back to Jen. Tyree is sent to home in a 92 vote, and they're claiming that Dan is the captain of the crew, and Evelyn takes Bananas' key after her speech of calling the crew bullies, outing the alliance, and saying fuck their alliance, and none of the speech ages well. Tyree really didn't get much game time until his final episode, and I don't know why he got so many chances, even after the season. He continues his rep of being a poor competitor, and who doesn't really offer anything. And I think this is the furthest that he's ever made it in a season, and that's just sad. Yeah, not much there. So, the Kenny and John crew are talking about Evelyn taking his key, and Paula is talking about being a pygmy. Those weren't her words, but that's how she's acting, essentially, where pretty much what she is saying is she will do anything to give Johnny his key again, or to get him his key again. Kellyanne and Kohara apparently wore an item after the real world season, and now they are just friends, but we do see them talking about the game, and I'm assuming he's going in since he barely got any focus throughout the season up until this point. Dan is getting drunk yet again, and is getting slapped with wooden platforms or whatever, which is just so... something. And Robin yet again does not like his drunken antics, which the men are actively encouraging. The people not in the Johnny Alliance are trying to get together, but Evelyn sees Derek, Robin, and Dan are in the middle, so Evelyn is trying to sway Robin, who sees everything with it being convenient with how Evelyn and when Evelyn is approaching her. Robin is worried about Evelyn going back to them, and Robin did correctly call this out, since this does happen in the finale, and Evelyn denies that she would ever do that. But she would never do that. Bananas is talking to Derek about how he is going to volunteer himself into the face-off, and we see Dan and Kohara talking about wanting to go in the face-off as well. Robin talks to Dan about his drinking, and it does seem like he feels bad about it, but then we move on to Evelyn campaigning to Derek, where she assumes that he's the swing vote, but he never was the swing vote, since he stated earlier on that he's setting with Kenny and Johnny in the very beginning of the season. We do see Danny and Robin kissing up on one another, but then he ends up passing out, where Robin does tell people that Dad has essentially a limp dick. Dan decides to snap at Robin with his aggressive finger pointing and all the drunken antics, and it does seem like he's a bit inebriated here yet again, and she does say to his face that he was limp, though they both admit that they didn't have sex. Coley accurately states that they are both alcoholics who cannot handle their liquor, and that's definitely correct, where they realize that they shouldn't be together sexually or romantically at all. The nominees are Derek, Johnny, and Kohara, and people are weirded out about Derek nominating himself, since he already has a key, but he and Johnny planned this beforehand, so they can help Johnny get his key, so it's a two-on-one essentially. Kahara is shocked and speaks to Kellyanne about his situation, where the both of them kind of realize that he will most likely go home, but people know that Johnny will go home against Derek, so they're hoping for that outcome to happen with Kahara winning this face-off. The face-off is wrapped in a cage where they have to attain certain keys for certain locks and get whatever they can in them, and it was just a mad challenge. Bananas, of course, wins the face-off and takes Evelyn's key, but we do see him making amends with Kelly Ann, since neither wants to argue with one another anymore, and once she reports this to Evelyn, she thinks that he is bullshitting her. Evelyn talks about how she will never sell out her soul to him or them, which of course aged poorly, and she will not leave here with any respect for him. It's clear that Kohara is a gunner against Derek, and he is voted out in a 10 to 1 vote. The episode ends with Evelyn ranting and raving about Johnny, Derek, and Kenny obnoxious celebrating the win, and she's literally throwing stuff around the house and stuff, and it's just really pathetic, and it's a poor showing on her part. I really don't have much to say about Kahara on this season. 
I did like his friendship with Kellyanne, and he is pretty likable, but he didn't do much in this season, and he was giving a pretty under the radar at that up until his final episode. And this is kind of a consistent theme with a lot of the mid boots of the season. I know he has several more seasons, so it will be interesting to see his journey in the future. For some reason, we start the episode with Bananas, Kenny, and Dave literally showing their literal asses to compare, and they ask Ryan for it, since of course, he's a gay man, and of course he likes men's asses, where Jen does mention that she will be Ryan's friend for years after the show. And I don't know if this actually happens, though I do know they're close in their future seasons, but that's neither here nor there. The Nerd Heart crew wants Ryan, who wants to go in to take Jen's key, but of course he would not do that because that is his friend, and you have people like Dunbar and Bananas shading Ryan for actually showing respect to women, unlike those ass wipes, and Ryan mentions that Dunbar didn't actually earn his key. The Herd is plotting for Johanna to get her a key, and they want her to take Kellyanne's key, and Holly wants to go in as well, but Kenny really doesn't care about her. Ryan mentions that Johanna had her chance to get a key when Robin argued with her for forcing them to go down in the face-off, and mentions that Johanna isn't the best competitor, which causes Johanna to go on a rant for a while about this. Derek doesn't feel like the two women deserve to get their keys because they do nothing, where he, Dunbar, Kenny, and Bananas want Dan and Ryan to get the key, since guys are better essentially, though Kenny is annoyed that Dunbar is worried about Kali taking his key. I always find it interesting that Derek kind of got away from the sexist allegations that essentially all of his other male allies would get throughout the seasons, though he clearly agrees with them, at least to some extent, which we just saw here. Holly freaks out about not having a key, and Johnny doesn't care at all, which causes an argument between the two of them, where he calls her out for not being a great competitor and wanting her key, since she wanted to do nothing but 10 five days ago, and it isn't the key holder's responsibility to get her a key. We have more complaining from both sides about this argument, and Johanna tells the awful two that herself, Coley, and Ryan want to volunteer to go in the face-off. The nominees go as everyone expects, and everyone starts to build the boat, where Paula mentions that she wants the guys to build a boat, since she is anti-stupid, not anti-girl, and this is after Robin was complaining to her. And this is just so sweet, especially with what happens to Paula in the episode after this. Paula and Robin continue arguing about it, and they tell her that her helping is just making things worse, and Johnny continues to make chauvinistic comments. Timber is the face-off, where they have to hold on to two ropes so the bags of coconuts won't fall, essentially, and this is a fine challenge. For Survivor, not the challenge. Ryan predictably wins the challenge, and they are all betting on him because he is a guy. And it's a given that Kali is going to go home. And we are just told about Kali and Johanna's friendship now that one of them is going home. Though they never really showed this in the other six episodes. Ryan is planning on either taking Dunbar or Kelly Ann's key. And Kali is... She asks to be sent home. Though she probably did this because she already knew she was getting voted out anyways. And it is granted in a unanimous 10 to 0 vote. Ryan does end up taking Kellyanne's key, which is such a weak bitch move, essentially, to join the Bananas Alliance right as the final episode's about to start, so, eh. But TJ announces that the four people not with keys can compete in the final face-off to take whatever keys they want, or whomever's keys they want, and they're in the final. Coley was a bit more memorable on this season, and I somewhat enjoyed her here, but in general, she's someone who's just very forgettable overall. I do see why she never came back after this, as she really isn't notable in either direction, but she was solid enough here, but once you're distanced from it, you're really not going to think of her at all. Everyone predicts that Evelyn is going to win the final face-off, and the herd is worried because no voting can save anyone anymore. Even Derek wants only the men on his team, and I've already kind of discussed his mentality being overshadowed by the assholes that he's in general aligned with. So, he wants to be with Johnny, Kenny himself, and Dunbar at the end, despite Dunbar not really proving himself in the season. Now the herd is conveniently being nice to Evelyn, and Kenny is trying to convince Evelyn to take Dunbar's key instead of Johnny's. Paula is freaking out, and Johanna has to calm her down about them both being safe, though Paula definitely has every right to be worried, which we will later see. 
And Dan is also freaking out, since he didn't do well in the last face-off competition, and you can tell that he is also wasted here yet again. Waterbound is the final face-off, where the ankles are tied, where they have to let themselves get drowned without dropping the weight and then swimming back up. And honestly, I got very nervous watching this challenge and seeing people kind of just drown after being pulled in the water. It really just isn't fun to me, and it brings back a lot of horrible memories. Evelyn, of course, wins the face-off and has the chance to take someone's key. Kenny speaks to Evelyn again about how they would like her to join their boat when they would be the best team if they all worked together. Though she wants to work with Derek and Kenny, she really isn't sure about Johnny. Bananas does end up speaking to Evelyn, and Dunbar does give his pitch to her as well. Because they did not win the face-off, Kelly Ann, Dan, and Johanna actually eliminated on the spot. And they really do this with more modern seasons, where they threaten that there's a skull twist or a star twist where the people who don't get one will be purged, but it never really, or it rarely ever actually happens. Eliane was a joy to watch, and she had a lot of fire, and showed that she can compete, so she had an enjoyable underdog run this season. Johanna was kind of just there throughout the season, and I kind of felt that way about her last season as well. Obviously, her romance with Kenny will be important in future seasons, and she had that fight with Robin, but she was mainly edited as an accessory and doesn't really have main character energy, and I know she has one more season left in her. Dan is someone who I thought was entertaining at times with his random freakouts, but then he got too drunk at times and came off as an alcoholic. I know he has one more season, so we will see how that goes for him. Dunbar sucks. No way around it. He was misogynistic and boring as well, which is the worst combination in general. But I know he has many other seasons in the future, so we will see how that pans out. Finalists have to choose their teams, where Evelyn, Derek, Kenny, and Johnny choose to be in a team, with Paula, Jen, Ryan, and Robin being the other team. Paula is really pissed off, since she was on their side the entire season, and Evelyn was never even working with them during the entire season, when she realized that she was screwed over by the guys, and she is more offended by Kenny over anyone else. To me, it also shows how being a male-identified woman never goes well, and her teammates have to cheer her up to get focused on afterwards. So it's kind of like how I felt about Evelyn earlier on in the season, where she and Paula shared that same mentality, but it got turned on Evelyn earlier in the season, and now it got turned on Paula here at the final. So after that, we move on to the next morning, where the others who are eliminated, so Denbar, Johanna, Killian, and Dan, are still around, but they have to help the others build the boat as well, while the finalists sail off and they're stuck on the island. The final is essentially them rowing to another island, and it's lame as hell. Not as lame as the Gauntlet 2 final, but it's pretty damn close. Kenny actually regrets not picking Paula and feels really bad, where Johnny clearly just doesn't care. To the surprise of no one, Derek, Kenny, Johnny, and Evelyn win the season. Robin actually had a very strong season, and I feel like this was the first season where she was a much larger character, especially compared to some of her other seasons where she was mainly in the background. She of course had that argument with Johanna, the volatile showman with Dan, her paranoia was huge, though she was correct a lot of the time actually, so on and so forth, though a part of me does wonder if her addiction might have started around here. This was Ryan's only season thus far, making it to the final, and I did like his friendship with Jen, which I know lasts for a few seasons, but in general he played a scared game, and it's something that he suffers from, even with the recent All Stars 4, but as a character he doesn't really stand out. Jen had her short romance with Rachel, which would carry on to the next season, but outside of that, she was still pretty calm, and I'm wondering when crazy entitled Jen comes into play. Paula really had a quiet season, though she was a male-identified pick-me throughout the season until the guys cut her in the finals, and she had a very emotional reaction. Though, I really didn't feel bad for her at all. Derek this season was firmly planted or implanted onto Johnny and Kenny's side, or S, depending on the term you want to use, where he became an official fourth person in that alliance. He was settling down with a wife and a kid, which might be why he was in the background, and I do get it from that point of view. But the main character vibe he was placed on in season 11 really didn't last. 
Evelyn definitely had a breakout performance this season, and while a part of me does feel sorry for her, she was fine with those men treating the woman like shit last season, and she was very male-identified in her mentality, and she ended up selling out at the end too, where we know from a future season that she ends up regretting it. Both Kenny and Bananas were chauvinistic, misogynistic assholes who took out all the fun of the show, and really took the show in a dark, horrible direction. I did not enjoy a single second of them on my TV, and I know Bananas regrets the season and his behavior, but he clearly felt like he needed to do all this to get a win, and to get out of being the supportive, expendable ally. There really is just no growth or accountability with Kenny, and I feel like he brings the worst out of a lot of people, though I will say that he does feel remorse when it comes to the policy situation, so maybe he isn't completely hopeless. So, I got access to the reunion, so of course I'm going to cover it. Evelyn feels like she is justified with her choice of working with Bananas and Kenny since the former left her alone with the last two weeks of the season, or in the last two weeks of the season, and she really wanted to work with Kenny and Derek in the finals, though we know that she will take this back on the ruins when it comes to her not feeling regret at this moment. And Kellyanne also agrees that Johnny was being nicer during the end of the season. It was clear that Kellyanne is a bit inebriated during the reunion, as she's just slurring her words at the entire thing, and then Paula does call out Evelyn for selling out her friend, though her drunk friend Kellyanne attempts to defend her, and I say attempts because she really just doesn't know what she's saying, and she has no conviction in anything she is stating. So Paula could just sit there and essentially know that she's winning the argument without having to do a damn thing, since Kellyanne's just making an ass of herself. Evelyn calls Paula out for being one of the reasons why she wanted to quit throughout the season. Robin calls out how male-dominated the island was on the season, though Kenny and Johnny justify their actions by claiming that no one wanted to be the leader, while the women state that they wouldn't even let them have the chance to lead or prove themselves. Paula immediately breaks down once it is her segment about the betrayal in the final. Bananas feels like he is being villainized and is trying to disengage and mentions the whole edit stuff, and he's also just throwing a tantrum all at the same time, while claiming that it was Kenny, not him, who made the deal with Evelyn. Kenny and Kellyanne end up arguing about Dunbar's key and why he felt the need to help someone he just met, and Kenny tells her that she just met Evelyn as well, while calling Kellyanne bitches a few times. Honestly, Kenny's just really, really horrendous this season, and people kind of just justify it by saying, oh, this was 10 years ago, oh, this was 15 years ago, but I felt like we knew right from wrong 10 to 15 years ago. But I guess it's just a sign with how misogyny was kind of actively encouraged during this time, and you can definitely see that here with the uh, mid to late era two seasons. Bananas is asked if he feels bad about his behavior towards the season, and he tries to excuse and justify his actions, and Kenny is also claiming that Paula was a girl, so he's kind of using Paula as a shield. Though clearly, Paula is a male-identified woman, so men are obviously going to gear towards a male-identified woman, and the fact that she was so easy to manipulate, that's why she's the quote-unquote token girl that they can deal with. But they're using that to claim that it was never about gender. Robin tries to explain things, and they both try to cut her off, yell over her, and essentially attempt to gaslight her. Kellyanne calls out Kenny for being fake, since at least Bananas had the gu guts to say it to her face and not pretend to be a friend like Kenny did. Derek justifies the men's actions by saying that they were doing it to entertain themselves, and Evelyn mentioned earlier on that Derek was the only respectable guy out of that group. The cast talks about the sickness and bruises that they got right after the season due to the horrible conditions, where Jen mentions that she literally went from the airport to the doctors and she apparently had like 250 mosquito bites, and Paula also had some sort of sickness as well, or bacterial illness. Johanna and Kenny are friends, though he's insinuating that they are friends with benefits. Jen is still straight despite hooking up with Rachel, as she is all Rina, though we know how that goes next season, and Ryan is still gay. 90% of the time, despite kissing women and dibbling here and there 10% of the time. I feel like the definitions for straight, gay, and bisexual are continuously moved, and the goalposts for those are continuously moved based on whatever's convenient for people at the time. But that's all I'm going to say there. Kellyanne announces that she is with someone that the fans and the cast know about, but she doesn't want to talk about it, only for it to be added by Bananas and a few others that she is dating Wes, and we'll see more of that on The Ruins. Also, Robin and Dave apparently did hook up when Nim Kate 
Limp gate happened on the season. Robin does ask Kimmy to apologize for calling her a pig, and he does apologize, though it really doesn't seem sincere. Somehow, Kelly, Anne, and Ryan end up arguing because he accuses her of having an evil streak, especially when it comes to warm men, and she's dating West to clout chase to hurt Johanna and to get a call back, essentially, and she thinks that it is ridiculous to date someone for two months for all of those fake reasons. Apparently, there was hints of Paula and Dunbar, which we'll see more of next season. Kenny does end up apologizing sincerely to Paula, and he apparently gave her some of his readings from what I've researched, though we hear Evelyn claim that she won't do another one for a while, though we know that didn't age well since she did The Ruins, though she essentially quit that season, and Kellyanne claims that she will never do another season. Reg aged very poorly as she did the most recent flagship season as I'm recording this, and she has done a bunch of spin-offs recently. So, yeah, she did several more. Fifth season is utterly horrendous. I really just do not have the energy right now, and it drained any sort of energy or positive thoughts that I had about anything after just finishing this. The island theme was horrible, the format sucked, that was decent on paper, but the actions of so many of the men on this season and the weaker woman on the season really just did not lead to a fun dynamic. And I forgot to mention that this was the start of the episodes being an hour long, or at least on the time slot, but the actual episodes were 40 minutes. So we had a lot more content on just the dynamics of the house, and it caused it to feel a lot more slow-paced, and it caused the eight hours to feel a lot longer. Clearly, this is at some of the worst points in the challenge history when it comes to just the toxicity, and I definitely see why they brought a lot more of the less toxic era one people on for the next season to have a lighter season, though even that was by happenstance with the CT and Adam DQs, but we'll get more into that next season. Yeah, this season, I definitely think is worse than some of the first four seasons, because at least while those four seasons are boring, it really has no connection to the future seasons, at least I wasn't frustrated and yelling and wanting to curse people out while watching it. But I will say that the season is definitely important to some of the story lights for the next few seasons, so I can't say that it's an irrelevant season. But yeah, definitely my least favorite of Era 2 so far. One of my least favorite overall. I wouldn't be shocked if this stays in the bottom five once I finish all 40 seasons. So thank you all for watching the content, and I'll be back with some more soon. Bye!